The following program was paid for by the friends and partners of WLMB TV 40 Toledo. Instead of saying, I'm waiting on God too, one of the most profound things that we can do to help ourselves is say, I'm worshiping God for. Because when we say, I'm waiting on God too, we have our eyes fixed on what it is that we want from God. And when we shift to, I'm worshiping God for, it puts us in a posture so we can see God for who He is and we can have our eyes open for how he is working in and around. Well, I want to welcome you to another episode of Main Street the fastest half hour in television. I'm Dr. Jamie Schmitz. Of course, I'm joined by my co-host for Pat, the past two decades, Virginia <laughs> Bosse. Well, Jamie, yes, this is going to be a fast half hour, but actually we're gonna be talking about waiting and what that looks like, you know, in the waiting room of life and all the lessons that uh, God might be trying to teach us during that time. And so we have with us Barb Roos. She's written a new book here called, I'm Waiting God, Finding Blessings in God's Delays. And so Barb, welcome, we're excited to have you here. Yeah, welcome back to Main Street. Well, Jamie and Virginia, I am excited to be back and celebrating with you being on air for 21 years. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank yes, you very thank much. Thank you, thank you. Barb, uh, you've been here on Main Street a couple times. Uh, please update us though about uh, yourself, your ministry, what's going on. Well, I am thankful to be back. Don't take this for granted. I love partnering ministry with you. And the last time I was here was in uh, spring of 2018 with my new Joshua Bible study and winning the Worry Battle book. Yeah. And since then, it has been about serving others. Uh, that is the essence of life, whether it is sitting across from a woman with a cup of coffee or speaking at a women's event or women's conference. I've had a couple of extra projects that I've been writing, including I'm Waiting God, and then another Bible study I just finished coming out next year. So it has been busy, but productive, but most of all, um, just grateful that God is able to send me to places to serve others. You know, as we're looking at this topic today of, you know, waiting on the Lord, um, you know, we know that that can bring out the best of us, it could be, bring out the worst of us, what is it about waiting on the Lord that often reverts us back to, you know, toddler-like tantrums, as you write about in your book? <laughs> well, I was remembering when my girls, who are all adults, when they were small, if they came and asked for a cookie and didn't get it immediately, like you, we all have seen a child just fall out in the floor, and the kicking and the screaming and the wailing and gnashing of teeth, and I realize that as an adult, sometimes I can kind of feel that way if there's something that I've been asking God for and it doesn't come immediately. Uh, there is a certain point at which I wanna have my own little temper tantrum, <laughs> uh, a point at which I may not fall out on the floor, but perhaps I might stomp off, maybe stop reading my Bible or not pray or, or not want to worship. So we may not be like children, but uh, waiting is hard when we don't get what we want when we want it, and it can sometimes create some pretty hard feelings and some really hard questions that we have to grapple with. And yeah, talking about life's questions, you know, as an author, you know, we know that sometimes authors write about, you know, things that are going on in their own lives, um, you know, things that they maybe need to learn and walk through. So please share an example of uh, you know, waiting in your life. One of the most profound examples was back in the recession, back in 2009, when the auto industry in Detroit slowed and so it slowed in Toledo. And at the time I was working on staff at Cedar Creek Church and I was working part time. I'd been praying for years for a full time position to open. When that position finally came to me, uh, then it had to be postponed because the auto industry had slowed the economy, which then created lots of job loss, decrease in giving. And I just remember uh, getting word that the job would be postponed. And every month that I sat and paid the bills, every month I had to say no to my kids, every month that I didn't get what I wanted, that was a very hard time for me. And I was a little upset with God, but I had enough, I had enough people around me that were encouraging. Uh, I had committed to studying the scripture. And so each day I was able to make a choice that I would keep trusting God. And then it was about a year later when that prayer was finally answered in a bigger and better way that I could imagine. 
but it did take time and it took intentional, an intentional decision to trust God. Yeah, you know, uh, Barb, one of the things you're talking about is, you know, describing as impatience, you know, and uh, I think we often blame our impatience on, you know, technology and uh, everything that, you know, being at our fingertips. But this issue of impatience, of, uh, you know, having to wait on the Lord, uh, that's not a new problem, is it? No, it's not a new problem. We like we do live in an Insta society. I mean, we love it when we can go online and our favorite delivery service sends whatever the next day. We love being able to pull up and get food in two minutes at a drive through. But humanity has always struggled with impatience. We've always seen something and wanted it now. Uh, one of the greatest examples in scripture is Abraham, Sarah and Hagar. Uh, they, Abraham and Sarah had been given a promise by God and they knew this promise would come to pass, but they got impatient. And the thing about impatience is it can get us what we want, but a lot of bitter feelings. So for Abraham and Sarah, impatience got them a baby and a whole lot of relational craziness. And I think for me, that's been a great lesson about impatience that I can push to get what I want, but often I'm wrecking relationships or I am uh, making my life a lot harder as I'm pushing. Yeah, that's a good word. Barb, what would you say kind of tangentially related to that though? Uh, what spiritual issues are usually being tested in us while we are waiting? Oh, it's a myriad of spiritual issues. And so depending on where often where we're trusting God, like impatience shows us where we want more than what God wants for us. And that is, that's a really hard tension to live in. Uh, when I think about what the scriptures say about unanswered prayers, like we know that unforgiveness and pride as well as unrepentant sin, we know that those can hinder our prayers. But there are other times when there are delays and we cannot say for sure what the delay is, but we know some delays are God is trying to get us to avoid harm. He just, he knows it's going to harm us. Another delay is there's just the supernatural opposition. We can't explain it. Just things happening in the spirit world. Uh, then there's perseverance and prayer. God knows that when he gives us what we want immediately, we're usually like, peace out and we run away. And so he wants us to persevere in connecting or then there's just waiting so we can see God's power on display. And so those are just some of the reasons why there are delays in prayer and we can't know for sure what it is, but the overwhelming message of them all is God is always at work in our waiting room of life. Yes, and you know, so how is I'm waiting God, finding blessings in God's delays, you know, how is this study uh, set up to be used? For me, this study is very personal. Uh, as the study goes through the four weeks, it's four weeks looking at four women in the Bible who dealt with different waiting room situations. Oh. And so the very first week, Hannah, her question is, has God forgotten about me and does he love me? Uh, her story is about the seasons in life when we've been praying for a long time and everyone seems to be getting what we want. And how do we walk by faith in that and trust God? The second week is Naomi and Ruth they both experience a tragic loss in life. Their life takes a completely different path after the death of their husbands. And it's now what, God? What do you do when your life totally takes a different train? The third week is the unnamed bleeding woman. She suffered for 12 years. Yeah. And there are many people listening today who've been praying, how long, God, are you going to leave me in this situation? And then the last week is Martha and Mary with Jesus after Lazarus died. And Martha and Mary both had to grapple with, what do we do when the answer to our prayer is no? And so those are the four questions of that Bible study. And, and it's an in-depth Bible study where we are tackling the hard questions, not the fluffy high level, like you missed the sale on curtains at Target. <laughs> These are the questions that often can slow us down, get us stuck or mess us up when it comes to our faith. And so the study is about really stepping into the real places where we're struggling in our relationship with God and finding real help, real hope, as well as God's blessing. And I like how you have it where people can, uh, you know, depending on what their schedule looks like, they can lengthen the study because you give like extra, um, you know, day four, day five kind of, uh, uh, tools yes. for um, people to really get uh, deep 
in their in their searching. It's a flexible format. Uh, most uh, most Christian women are familiar with the Beth Moore style study or Priscilla Shire. And so I write that style. It's a six week, five day study, but I'm waiting. God is a flexible format. So it's three days of in-depth study. And then for the woman who wants extra or the guy, because guys can do it as well. There is a self study day as well as a devotional journaling day. I've always journaled and through my waiting room season, as I look back on my journals, they become this mark the moment opportunity where I can see where God was working in my life. So there are journaling opportunities I'm waiting God because I want a participant to also have their own mark the moment when they look back and they can see how God was changing them and transforming them and blessing them. Now, you know, in your book, you talk about what that journey of patience looks like because it's not really how we all might envision it and like how the path goes over. And maybe you could talk a little bit more about that. When it comes to road trips, we set our GPS and we want to get from point A to point B. Sure. And we do not want to deal with any kind of drama. Except patience isn't like that. Patience is how I characterize it. It's more like a process and a path as well as a prayer. And the path itself, gratitude, is a key part of it. So every day in the I'm Waiting God study, there's a place, a place to do a gratitude exercise. The next is God's promises. Understanding how God sees us and what he wants for us, that is a huge part of our waiting room journey because when we don't feel like God is present, when we feel like he's forgotten us or doesn't love us, then in the waiting room, we're more apt to act on those feelings. So fix it, fixing our eyes on who God is, how he sees us and what he wants from us, that's a huge part of the journey. And it's been a huge part in my life of going, what are God's promises for me? And how do I live in those promises? Because it's there that I find blessing and then perspective. That is another part of the patience path. Instead of saying, I'm waiting on God too, one of the most profound things that we can do to help ourselves is say I'm worshiping God for. Because when we say I'm waiting on God too, we have our eyes fixed on what it is that we want from God. And when we shift to I'm worshiping God for, it puts us in a posture so we can see God for who he is and we can have our eyes open for how he is working in and around us. Yeah, but Barb, for the person who uh, maybe doesn't see God working in and around them, um, and their question might be, you know, uh, does God answer, you know, why do I have unanswered prayer? What would you say to that person? The hardest thing in the world is living with a very important unanswered prayer. And so before I ever would say anything to someone, I would ask them to sit down and just tell me what's on their heart, what's hard about it. When people are praying for their children, to stop doing jugs, when someone is praying for a marriage that has been in, ter in turmoil, someone's praying for financial relief, often it's not necessarily the unanswered prayer, it's the pain. Mm -hmm. It's the pain that's hard. It's the day after day of wondering, is there hope? Will there be an end? And so some of the most compassionate things that we can do for people, just as Jesus did, is give people the ministry of presence to give someone space to talk about what's difficult. And then if I did have a moment, I would sit down and we would go over God's promises and we would make a gratitude list to see what God has already done and to see what God has promised for the future. Very good, thank you, Barb. Yes, thank you, Barb. And we're gonna hear more about what that waiting room, what that looks like as uh, we just keep crying out to God during that waiting period when, you, when we come back. God has more for me and God has put more in me and I'm not alone no matter what I face in that day. If I've got to wait another day, it's okay because God, he is at work and I can trust him. The mission of Dominion Broadcasting WLMB-TV 40 is to provide Christ-centered television of high technical quality and programming excellence to uplift, unite, educate, challenge and encourage viewers in a manner consistent with the teachings of God's Word. Won't you join us? Please send your gift today and be a part of the ongoing mission of WLMB TV 40. Thank you. WLMB's free monthly program guide keeps you informed about your favorite Christ-centered and family-friendly programming found on WLMB. 
there's something for the whole family to enjoy, from great Bible teachers to classic family favorites. Plus, you'll find family movies, news from a Christian perspective, local shows Main Street and Pastor's Point, excellent don't-miss documentaries, and much more. Enjoy quality Christian television on WLMB TV 40 and sign up for your free monthly program guide today. Now, back to Main Street. We're here with Barb Ruth, uh, speaker and author of I'm Waiting God, Finding Blessings in God's Delays. And Barb, you know, I want to touch on again, um, talking about unanswered prayers, because in week three of your book, I just loved where you talked about that try harder faith and the mustard seed faith. If you could talk about that more with our viewers, I would love that. Oh, well, I would. I think for me, when we have prayers that go for a long time and they're unanswered, one of the things that I wanted to dive into was how do we respond? Uh, in, our, in our first world culture, we kind of hold on to this theology that we pray and we pray harder and then at some point God will give us what we want. But what do we do when God doesn't fix it? for many the response is to double down so we're going to pray even harder we're going to pray even more we're going to go to church even more and that that try harder faith it is um, it's not exactly what jesus taught about and so there's a there's a section of the study where we cover a story where jesus is teaching the disciples and he uses the illustration of uh, mustard seed faith and he tells them that if you have the faith like a mustard seed, he could tell a tree to replant itself in the middle of the ocean, okay. something seemingly impossible. And what I appreciate about this is what Jesus casts a vision for is that when we're in this relationship with God, this personal relationship with God, that it's not about what we are doing. It's not about God expecting us to, to sweat it out and to stress it out but to stay connected to him. That it's not about try harder faith, it's about taking the faith that we do have. And uh, I related it to that unnamed bleeding woman story because she had been bleeding for 12 years. 12 long, years. 12 long years, that's like 3,800 days. She had sold everything that she had. She didn't have her family around her. And if we put ourselves in her position, she didn't have much left. And she hears that Jesus is teaching. And so she has to go, there's no find friends on Facebook. Right. So it's not like she could pull up the GPS and find Jesus, but she has to go from town to town. By the time she gets to Jesus, I imagine that weak woman had nothing left. Mm -hmm. She couldn't try harder. But what she does is she takes the faith that she has and she keeps pressing towards Jesus. And I think that's the lesson that God wants us to get in seasons of unanswered prayer. There are gonna be hard days. There's gonna be days when we're not gonna feel like we can do it. And we don't have to keep trying harder. We just keep reaching toward God with what we have. That's a good word. Barb, uh, let me ask you this. Uh, how can we protect ourselves from bitterness that uh, may happen, you know, because we're waiting so long upon the Lord. It's easy to get discouraged. Uh, in my life, part of what inspired this Bible study was there was, an, there was a prayer that I prayed for 10 years. And this prayer was, it was about the survival of my family. And the, for me, the key to not being bitter was gratitude. Gratitude is the antibiotic for any germ of bitterness in our Sorry, lives. <laughs> it, it really is. It's, it was stopping every day to intentionally go, what has God done for me? Because as long as I have my eye on what I want from God, then I am allowing that to become greater and bigger than anything else. And I'm missing everything that God does for me day in and day out. Uh, in the second week of the Bible study, that's where we talk about Ruth and Naomi. And Naomi changes her name to Mara, which means bitter. And essentially her rationale is God did this to me. And when we're in a waiting room of life or a hard circumstances in life, when we have that, that feeling that God did it to me, 
uh, that is inevitably going to keep eroding at us. And so the part that I try to take away is that we can always take our anger to God. Mm -hmm. Bitterness happens is when we turn our backs and we take our anger away from God and talk about him and we disparage him. That's where bitterness and honestly, I mean, who wants to walk around bitter? It's easy to do, but we just, we all intuitively know bitter is not how we want to live. But gratitude, even the littlest gratitude, helps us dig our way back out of it. Now, is there ever time, you know, to let a prayer go? Because, you know, sometimes things can just go on and on and on. But, um, you know, is there a time that we just say, okay, God, we're done? That's probably one of the hardest questions out there. Uh, we have got in one hand, the New Testament, I think it's First Thessalonians say that we're supposed to pray continually, pray without ceasing. And then we have Ecclesiastes 3 that says that there is a, a beginning and an end in all things. And in my life, uh, this was the experience where I prayed for a decade. And then the circumstances and the events of our lives, uh, I realized that I had to shift that prayer. It wasn't because God couldn't do it. It was because God was doing something different. And the, the responsibility on me was to open my hands and say, God, I prayed for something that you're not doing, but am I willing to leave my hands open and accept what you are doing? And I think that, that is, uh, that's part of the patient's journey is to keep our hands open and be willing to accept what God puts in our hands and allowing him to use it how he wants. Uh, in the first week, we cover the story of Saint Sarah or of Hannah. And uh, part of Hannah's prayer when she prays for a son, part of her prayer that's so powerful, she says, Lord Almighty, she acknowledges God for who he is. Then she makes the big ask, give me a son. And then she gives him back before she ever receives him. And I think part of that place of learning to let go is to constantly say, I'm going to live open handedly so that when things come into my life and when things leave, even things that I love, I can still trust the God who brings and who takes away. I will still trust him. I will still bless his name. I will still walk with him and I will still believe that he can bless me. Because in your book, you, you know, you talk about uh, our relationship with God not being based on, oh, well, God answered this prayer. Praise the Lord. But even in the midst of those hard times, we're still saying, thank you, God. Praise the Lord and giving him the glory. Right. We have this. Th it's so easy for us to say glory to God when the when the scan comes back for your clans to cancer. Glory to God when the job is saved. Glory to God. Like, but we're not so quick to say it when the prayer isn't answered how we'd like. And in my in my journey to learn how to trust God, no matter the circumstances in my life, the question has become, am I going to trust God and his glory, no matter the outcome of my story? Or am I only going to give God glory when he gives me what I want? And that's that's a challenge for us. But when we live for God's glory, no matter our story, mm -hmm. we can find blessing no matter what happens. Those better blessings in life, the better blessings of hope and peace and joy, those eternal treasures that Matthew 6:20 talks about, that's what God wants to give us from himself. But if we only have our eyes and saying, God, I'm only gonna be happy if you give me this, if you give me this house, this, this spouse, this outcome, then we're limiting what we are, we could receive from God because he's got so much more to give us no matter the outcome of our prayers. Barbara, how would you encourage someone who may be in an intense period of waiting right now? The intense period of waiting is uh, it's intense. I remember days in my life when I could barely get out of bed because the weight of waiting felt so heavy. So I want to first just say you, if that's you today, um, that you are seen and that you are loved that God has not forgotten about you and that there is hope. That is, that's really the first thing I want them to hold on to. And then the second is to, to give thanks. Look around your life. God is moving, he has been working, he loves you and he cares about you. And so 
Give thanks for the things that he has blessed you with. And then God's promises. In the Bible study, I talk about this routine that I have called God Morning, God Night. And I do it most every day. Did it this morning. It's where I repeat five promises of God to myself before I get out of bed. Because as soon as we wake up, we immediately begin thinking about everything that needs to get done, what won't get done. But when I repeat five promises of God, it helps me shift my mindset to that God has more for me and God has put more in me and I'm not alone no matter what I face in that day. If I've got to wait another day, it's okay because God, he is at work and I can trust him. Good word, Barb. And what would you say to someone who said, you know, uh, you know, the Lord answers prayer with a yes. And we're like, yeah, thank you, Lord, for answering the prayer. Uh, but uh, what do you say to the person when a person prays, even for a long time, they wait a long time, but the answer back from the Lord is an absolute no. What would you say to encourage that person? That's a hard one. Um, and that is actually what happened in my case. The answer to my decade long prayer was no. And, uh, and um, how that you, meant that- How that, are you dealing with that now today? Well, some of that's still unfolding um, because it, it meant the end of a 26 year marriage. Um, it meant uh, our family had fallen apart. However, in the decade of praying that prayer, I was blessed because God drew me to himself. And uh, this isn't a cliche, this isn't a, 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 a spiritual band-aid, but it was a God who knew that I needed something greater than one specific prayer answered. There is a process that I call my annual funeral, and uh, this is a process that, an intentional process in the Bible study that I've done the last decade to help me let go of resentment and disappointment and pain and anger. And uh, all throughout these years of praying, I've been able to engage in that process intentionally so that over time as God's been working in my life, even up until when the answer was no, I could still experience God's blessings even in the midst of great heartache. And so that, that funeral process has been life-giving and life-saving because when we let things go, especially in the face of a no, we let it go, that means that we're creating space for God to plant something new in our lives. And that's so important. Yes, well, thank you, Barb. You know, sharing from the heart and I know that um, you know, the message that God has given you will touch so many lives and we so appreciate that. Um, but uh, so how can people find out more about you, your books, you know, speaking? Awesome. Well, the easiest thing is to head over to barbroost.com. There is actually an I'm waiting study tab. The great thing is there's free stuff there. One of my <laughs> free favorites is cell phone wallpapers because I found that our phones can often facilitate impatience, like simple <laughs> wallpapers like PBT, pray before texting. Or another one that I love is, um, should you make that phone call or pray first? So, but there's other free resources there that people can get and you can also find out where I'm speaking. That's wonderful. Well, Barb, thank you for being with us and uh, will you come back and visit us on Main Street another time? I hope so. Thank uh, you for having me today. All right, God bless you. Thanks for being with us. Yes, thank you, Barb. All right, well, thank you for joining us this week on Main Street. Be sure to join us next week for another great episode. We hope that Main Street has been a blessing to you today. Please feel free to contact the following to learn more about the topics discussed on today's show. WLMB would like to thank all the faithful supporters of WLMB that make this program possible. Main Street is a production of WLMB TV 40 in Toledo. All rights reserved.